seeing a real dead body in person and how you know, horrifying that could be or something. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been fascinated with death growing up, partially because of ghosts and partially because of all that stuff. Um, but then I ended up vid- visiting Italy when I got out of high school because I'm Italian American. So it was like, and I basically did like an exchange program there um, to like, visit my roots, I guess. But I ended up going to this um, monastery from like the Renaissance. I think it was from like 1600s. And what they had is the, they had all the monks' bodies embalmed and mummified. And it was like my first real real experience with like seeing like dead humans and like bones. And it's just like, it was interesting. It wasn't like scary or spooky because it, it's, it was nice to know that it was on their own volition and it was like their way of like yeah. honoring God and like preserving their, um, their bodies for it. Um, but it was very surreal. It was, cause I feel like with our culture, especially we're so disconnected from death. Um, whereas yeah. like, you know, most of our history, death was at every part of your life, you know, we're lucky in that way. Yeah. yeah. We, we definitely have a very fortunate society where death is not as common. You know, there's more people who survive, you know, very common things that used to just wipe out, you know, childbirth or yeah. flus or colds or heck, even the winter, you know, we've got medicine and food supplies and warmth on mm-hmm. demand basically. Like, the fact that it was expected that one of your kids was, like, guaranteed to die. Like, yeah. that's insane. That some cultures, like, you don't name your kid until they're yeah. some age. Because mm-hmm. it would not be worth it to get that attached to him. He's, uh, but yeah, it's also, you know, it is, I mean, that, you know, kind of branching off that in a bit. Um, that's something I find our society is very poorly, we we don't celebrate the end of things a lot. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of products and a lot of media that focuses on like youth and being young forever and hiding your wrinkles, and dyeing your hair. And, you know, a lot of our stories are about, you know, young teen rebels, and high school sweethearts who get married and, you know, these, these kind of everlasting characters that don't, change don't grow don't die etc and like i think our society needs to be better like american society i think needs to be better like accepting like hey things end and that's Mm -hmm. okay things change and that's okay you'll grow old you'll grow weaker you'll grow apart whatever and like that's okay yeah so like uh do you know about bhutan it's considered like the happiest country in the world um no but it's mainly a boot i i like a lot of buddhist philosophy um that I like to apply to my own life, but they're basically a Buddhist country. And basically one of the key factors in their culture is like being aware of impermanence and that they will all grow old, get sick and die. And a lot of people, and I agree with this. I think there's a real power. If you accept or are aware of that, like knowledge, it's a lot easier, I think, to live a happier life. Cause it's like, there's like, it almost imbues a sense of gratitude. Cause you know, this will nothing is forever. You know, yeah, um, and it can be. Well, that's something... It can just be like I. I feel like people immediately respond like, "Oh, that's so depressing. That's so horrible." I'm like, but I, I don't know. I think it's what makes like things valuable, makes things like special. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it makes things special and valuable, but also it's the truth. It's the one mm-hmm. truth about everything in existence. Yeah. From, from you know the trees I'm looking out the window at to ourselves, to our pets, our, our families, our loved ones the building I'm in, you know, the cities we're in, like they all will end at some point. They're going to change and grow. And to deny that is to deny literally existing. Yeah. You know, like, and that's, it's kind of this shame. Like you look at human history, like, you know, pyramids and stuff like that. Like, you know, so many important people have tried to live beyond their life and build monuments for themselves. You know, we, we know of King Tut. Yeah. We don't know King Tut, you know, and it's, it is a lot more powerful, I think, just to kind of accept, yeah, things are going to change and I'm not going to make it out of this alive. I mean, I really love that uh, that poem by Shelley, um, Ozymandias. You know, he okay. here, uh, actually, let me put it up real quick. I want to read it because it's really short and it's one of my favorite. And it's literally about this uh, explorer who uh, comes across these Egyptian ruins and... Uh, he reads the uh, the uh, pharaoh's statement. Um, so 
Um, this is Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. It was written like the 1800s. It's actually Mary Shelley's husband, fun fact, the uh, author of ah. Frankenstein. Um, I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive stamped on those on these lifeless things the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed and on a pedestal these words appear my name is on ozymandias king of kings look on my works ye mighty and despair nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck boundless and bare the lone and level sands stretch far away hmm. yeah so breaking bad actually uh, is what, how I found out about that poem because they have a whole episode named Ozymandias um, but yeah I mean that's that's like uh, that's just one of my favorite poems because it has to do with that whole kind of theme and that thought process because um, it's it just shows you I mean like that's why I love history period it's just that you think your world has always been constant always existed and it's far from the truth yeah well yeah again like I I wish we were all a little bit better about that kind of stuff. You know, somebody mentioned at the beginning of this quarantine that that's kind of like why a lot of us are we're struggling and like mm -hmm. kind of mourning, kind of you know feeling really upset. It was because we had you know, kind of come to expect that tomorrow was going to happen a certain way, you know, and that suddenly all this happened and things are not going the way any of us planned. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I think it's a little unfair to think that you know it's that it's that weird thing where like you you want to live for today. But you also have to plan for tomorrow too, so you kind of got to find a balance. Like yeah. Our society's not exactly built for that. Um, yeah. At least, like for me, whenever a conflict happens on a personal level or on a more like external world uh, level, I always try to find like what's the positive we can take away from this. Like, if there is a positive we can take away from this, um, like, like at least yeah. for this, I'm hoping that it'll help kind of reveal the things that we've been ignoring, the problems we've been ignoring, either on a personal level or on a more external level, and be like, hey, maybe we start handling these things, you know, so. Yeah, well, and yeah, like, I, I know I personally don't believe in, like, fate exactly, or that all things happen for, like, a reason exactly, mm -hmm. but also I do believe that you can find good in the bad, and, you know, I'm also speaking from, like, a privileged spot where, like, I haven't had, I haven't had, you know, like, any major trauma or loss of loved yeah. ones or life or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, again, life is, is struggle. Life is trouble. Life is a lot of ups and downs, and we will lose loved ones and lose things. And, like, while it hurts and it, it sucks and you want to avoid it as best you can if you if you let yourself kind of focus or wallow on the negative on the loss you're going to miss out on you know the life that continues and what comes out of that and and sometimes you know bad stuff happens that we can then take our experience and bring it to the next time something bad happens and we're we're more prepared yeah or we're able to help somebody out who isn't prepared you know um you know, I, again, I, I, I totally understand that, like, it's a lot easier saying this just because, you know, I, I got bullied and that was my big trauma yeah. problem going on in high school. And mm -hmm. now I feel, you know, I'm, I'm a better person for it. Uh, but on the other hand, like, you know, there's stuff like that that I think is important to try to take with you moving forward of things. You know, like, again, like the whole quarantine life has really messed up a lot of people's lives definitely didn't wish it to happen but also it's happened and there's nothing we can do about that yeah so all we kind of do is kind of pick up the pieces and move forward from this and kind of figure out what we can learn and, and if it helps us all look to the future a little differently than we did before and change some things that maybe we needed to change you know again personal level in uh, national level and a global level you know i think that's a good thing yeah and like just as a little i guess like a self-experience like exp imp knowing about impermanence and like accepting that has really helped me with like being less of like a bitter person you know like not holding on to grudges it's just like in the end these things these little feuds they just don't 
matter. Like, obviously there's context for that. But, like, most of the time, like, I get into a fight with my sister and I'm pissed. You know, she broke my Lego set. I'm thinking, like, eight-year-old James. <laughs> I spent hours putting that together. Um, you know, this is a very light example. But um, it does help to kind of just take a step back and just, like, put things into a bigger picture. Um, yeah. For me, like, that's just one of my little tools that I try to use. Um, I will say this has probably been our most philosophical uh, episode <laughs> to date. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how my conversations tend to go. It's yeah, I love it. It's great. I haven't, I haven't like had a conversation about like impermanence in a long time. So it's, yeah. it's a nice uh, refresher. Well, yeah. I mean, just uh, one more little antidote to that, and then maybe we can talk about something yeah. uh, a little bit lighter. You know, I can mm -hmm. talk about Breakout Godzilla or whatever. Um, but I know, like, for me, like, I've had a lot of uh, heartbreak over the last few years, uh, a lot of relationships that left me feeling very uh, just hurt mm -hmm. and just very, uh, you know, what's wrong with me or why didn't things go the way, you know, the way I thought they would or wanted them to. Um, and like, especially going into quarantine, I was, I was like, you're stuck when I was bitter about being single and like, I would look out the window and see these, you know, couples you know, walking mm -hmm. um, their masks on and like, you know, embrace and hug and hold hands. And I'm sitting in my apartment, you know, haven't touched a human being in two months or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't talked to anybody except for over the phone or talked to my roommate, you know, uh, he was, he was a good guy, but you know, we kept our, our own stuff yeah. separate. Um, and, but anyway, so like, I was really upset about that stuff, you know, but I've been, uh, I was, I had just got into therapy before all this happened and now I'm doing therapy over the phone and that's been helpful. And I was talking to my that's therapist good. and, kind of came to the conclusion it's just like you know what i as much as i really wanted i really would love to have some, somebody in my life to talk to and lean on and share stuff with um i'm also like focusing on the ideal version of what that would look like right now and for most couples i know this is a really bad time yeah like even if, whether they live together or not like there's fights breaking up i have at least a few friends who are going through like really messy divorces mm. like either be just before all this or like more or less during this like things kind of finalized and like Man. that would be a nightmare to dealing with on top of all this yeah. um you know so I, I kind of like have to remind myself like oh yeah like i i've been feeling lonely but also like i could be dealing with you know something way uh more disruptive to my peace right now um, and also like, you know, I look back on my past life, you know, and I, I look back at like younger me and I'm like, oh, you know, I wish I wish I could have had somebody when I was you know younger and just out of college or whatever. But then also I look back at like young Eric and I'm like, you're an idiot. You, you don't know what you want. You're not emotionally <laughs> yep. available. You're not mm -hmm. good at communication. So, you know, I, I, I've I kind of had to shift my thinking and look at it instead of being bitter that like, oh, I'm, you know, 32 and I don't have, you know, a wife or a girlfriend or whatever. Um, I also had to like look and be like, you know what, though, like younger me very well could have got into some, you know, could have been that stupid kid that was dating someone in high school so long. He was just like, well, I guess we get married now. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, you know, in some sort of bitter, loveless, you know, abusive relationship where she's abusive. Or I mean, even, even I could have been abusive because like. Yeah. You know, coming from like small town Pennsylvania and not, you know, if I never got out of the city or if I just never had these years to grow on my own, like, you know, things could have been really shitty. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to be thankful that I'm where I am now because it's trying to make the most of it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, I've always had this mentality of like, I'd much rather be single and get married at 40 and have a great marriage than rush into a relationship out of like loneliness and basically yeah. try to force something that really was never going to work. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people, yeah, we, we do that. We, we mm -hmm. try to make something work that really isn't working and either we're too stuck on like what is and afraid of losing that for the future or yeah, we're just, we have a, a wrong idea of what we're looking for. Yeah. I know for me, it was definitely I had the wrong idea of what I was looking for in the past. Um, yeah. Hey, so you're watching our clip video. If you liked it, you should check out the full podcast. You can find it on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Links in the description. We have a bunch of SCP guests that we want to get onto the podcast. 
So subscribe, stick around, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around. Thanks, guys. <laughs>